Good morning, everyone. Welcome to my daily show. And as you can see, we don't have any more live backgrounds. Um, I chose to do a static background. That'll be the choice of every teacher who's going to be doing this format of the daily show because it's easier to obtain. Um, we got to cut down some things because we have double the work to do now with the Zoom classes, the Zoom sessions. So uh, I got to make the daily show a little bit easier to make. So no complicated stuff. So I'm sorry we don't have live backgrounds anymore. However, I bring you today's background, which is Joshua's, uh, blah, 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 blah. Joshua's Crossing in Lake Ann, United States of America. And the picture is by Dennis Buchner. I believe that's how you pronounce his name. Uh, it's by Dennis Buchner at Bateman via Unsplash.com. It doesn't look like it's correctly showing on the screen. Let me move it. There you go. Via Unsplash.com. Very nice picture that depicts fall or autumn, which is what the season that we're in so let's move on to our slide there you go guys it is wednesday october 7th 2020 and here is our new background it's halloweenish uh, i told you guys i promised to give you guys a new background picture for the next month which is now this month and i chose this uh, halloweenish background also, as you notice, we won't be moving on to our daily exercise anymore uh, because uh, exercise happens now on our Zoom sessions. So if you want to participate in live exercises, you should tune in every day, Monday through Friday at 8.30 to 9 a.m. Um, however, if you cannot then we will upload our old exercises in the channel. You just have to go to Ability to Learn channel in YouTube and we will make a playlist for you guys that is named uh, Exercises. So, without further ado, let's continue to our daily observances. There's something going on over here. Let me fix that a second. Be right back. There you go. It should be fixed right now. Sorry about that. Let's move on. Our first observance today is bathtub day. Um, I don't know about you, but I'm not actually a fan of bathtubs. Uh, since my daily life is uh, very quick and on the go, I'd rather have a shower room. Those are nice. Uh, especially the ones that has a shower head that makes it feel like it's just raining instead of a shower those are nice um, especially uh, here in California I feel bad wasting so much waters when you soak in a bath so how about you guys my question is any of you guys a fan of going in a bath uh, or are you like me who just like a quick shower just to clean yourself instead of soaking I mean it doesn't mean I don't want to soak in the water uh, after all, I love water, but I would rather swim in a swimming pool if I want to do that or uh, go on a lake or a beach for that, you know? So yeah, tell me on the comments below. Next is National Flower Day. Now, if you ask, uh, if I ask you what your favorite flower is, most of you are probably going to say rose because it's the most well-known one after all. But today is National Flower Day, not National Rose Day. So my question is going to be a little bit altered um, since we're celebrating all flowers after all. Uh, that means all the varieties. So because rose is the most common one and it already has enough exposure being the most popular flower, the real question is besides rose, what is your favorite flower? Now, my favorite is jasmine. In the Philippines, we call it sampaguita. 
Um, I love it because it it real it its smell is really calming to me. It's very fragrant. However, it doesn't assault your nose. Uh, it's just a mild fragrance kind of thing. Now, uh, with each of us sharing our own unique type of favorite flower, maybe you'd learn new varieties if you read the comments below. Remember, no rose. And I guess you can't copy me too. I said Jasmine, you can't copy Jasmine too. Uh, you have to pick a different flower, all right? And bonus, if you could pick a different flower that hasn't been shown in the comments yet, that's even better. Next is National Kale Day. Kale, it's what they call super greens. Since they are healthy for you, it's super. Uh, they are healthier raw, so people who are health conscious try to eat them raw, like in salads or they, they squeeze it to make a uh, vegetable juice kale juice and uh, but i know while i do recommend you try to be healthy i'm i'm not really more of a health conscious person i just i just like to pick uh if i get to pick which of which then the healthier one has some sort of weight to it i'm more of a flavor conscious person so i'm not gonna eat kale raw i don't like like it that way i like it cooked so I would cook my kale in a stir-fry. Cooking reduces its potency in delivering its nutrients. That's why they say that it's less healthy. But I want that balance, you know? I, I don't want just super healthy. I, I want to bring down the healthiness, but then you bring up the flavor. So you, you get that balance. I want that balance. And I want to enjoy eating it, so I would be more encouraged to eat it a lot more than just once or twice, you know. Uh, that, that, that actually is a good, um, what do you call this, good tip for all of you guys who are trying to eat healthy. If you try to eat the most healthiest thing right away, you probably are not going to like it and you're going to stop doing it. So what you want to do is ease into it. So if you want to try to eat healthy you want to start with making little little adjustments uh, in this case if you want to start eating kale don't go straight away to kale salads go little by little start with cooked kale and as you get used to and as you enjoy the flavored kale you're probably going to be able to eat kale raw so that's how you're going to do it so question is how about you are you a fan of kale if you want to try kale, why not try uh, the easiest way to get them that's already cooked is Panda Express, not sponsored. Panda Express has a dish called Super Greens that you could order instead of rice or chow mein. So maybe the next time you eat, like I said before, just don't go straight to full on uh, Super Greens, uh, Super Greens, Super Greens. Just don't go straight onto it. Ease on it little by little. So if you usually order half and half chow, chow mein and rice, try half and half chow mein and super greens this time, or half and half super greens and rice instead of chow mein and rice. So so replace one half of your usual, and see you might like it. Uh, and if you end up liking it, then your body will thank you for it. Um, and yeah. Not sponsored by Panda Express. I'm just saying that's the easiest way to get some. If no one's gonna cook it for you, you know. It is now National Pumpkin Seed Day today. So pumpkin seeds are one of the better for you snacks that you can eat. Um, for example, I try to reduce the amount of chips I munch on to keep my body healthy. Uh, so what can I eat instead of chips if I can't eat a lot of chips? I still eat chips, but not as much as I used to do. The biggest go-to are nuts. I eat a lot of variety of them. Um, you could eat peanuts. That's the most common. You could eat almonds, pistachio, cashews. However, I have been eating too many of them, so I got tired of them for now. So what can I eat now if I'm tired of nuts? Then I could eat seeds, sunflower seeds, and today's observance, pumpkin seeds are something I have been enjoying lately. So why don't you guys give it a try? 
Again, you might like it. Next is National Frappe? Frappe? I think it's Frappe. It always confuses me because there is a schwa, which is the E with the little thing. And whenever there's that, uh, you, you, you're supposed to pronounce it A. A. Frappe. So whatever, Frappe. So Frappe, hopefully I'm saying it that right. Frappe can be many different things, but because it says uh, just Frappe, National Frappe Day, or Frappe, jeez, I don't know which is which at this point. National That Day. Um, I'm going to go with the French definition of it, which is uh, drinks that are chilled with ice. So that's why I chose that picture. Uh, and beginning in the 19th century, cold coffee and... You know, cold coffee and some cold coffee drinks named Café Frappe. I, oh man, this is so hard to read. Café Frappe à la glace. Which is the French um, word for it. Uh, were documented uh, and they are similar to the slushies that we have today. So I guess it's beginning is complicated. Especially because I don't even know how to say it correctly. Frappe or frappe. Um, it came from France, the whole slushy things that you guys love to enjoy in Starbucks, by the way. Uh, you could get that in Starbucks, like I said, or McDonald's or, or any really coffee or tea shop. They usually serve some sort of slushy with coffee and that's a frappe. So what is your favorite flavor or mix? I know a couple of you guys, especially nowadays, are going to say pumpkin spice. Well, me, I don't. I don't like pumpkin spice. <laughs> Mine, my favorite is matcha green tea frap. Uh, you can see it right here. Um, hopefully I'm pointing at it correctly. But uh, because it's sweet, it's really hard not to have uh, a frap that's not sweet. I only get it every, once like every, what, two, three weeks, uh, you know, just so I don't eat, uh, dr not eat, so, just so I don't drink too much uh, sweets. Let's move on to, uh, wow, that, let, let me go back and show, there you go, it was kind of lagging, but. Now we're moving on to Today in History. 1996, Fox News broadcasts for the first time. It is hard to find a picture of Fox Newsroom because they keep a tight lid on what images they allow people to use. So the picture that I show here is a picture of a gift shop of Fox News memorabilia. Uh, but you get the idea because the gift shop kind of looks like their newsroom anyway. Fox News is created by an Australian-American businessman, Rupert Murdoch, and has become one of the most watched news channels in the United States. Fox News program slogan is fair and balanced. But as I have told you, um, what I told you guys before, no news company or firm or group is 100% fair or balanced. So you should always watch your news or get your news from different sources. You could watch Fox News and then maybe after that read a newspaper. Maybe after that go to a website, um, not Facebook. You should not get your news from Facebook. Um, it has to be a, a news source. Uh, some people just get it from the, their TV, but what they do is they watch Fox News, then they watch CNN, and then they watch MSNBC. They watch different channels of news just so that they get the information from different sources and kind of decide for themselves what, in their opinion, is fair and balanced. Um, I mean, that's just, that's just the best way to do it. Um, I do recommend, though, that not just get, getting it on TV, you should always have one news source that you read just so that you could practice your reading skills, you know. So you could go watch um, Fox News because today's observance is Fox News. 
or not, this is not observance. Today's history is about how Fox News broadcasts for the first time. So you can go watch Fox News today and then go read the newspaper of whatever, um, whatever publication that you want. Next. 1959, people on Earth get the first glimpse of the dark side of the moon. Well, that is what the entry is called, so I just put it up there. However, I don't really like calling it that because first, it can be confused with Pink Floyd's album of the same name. Remember, he has an album called um, The Dark Side of the Moon. And second, it's not always dark there. Sometimes the, sh the sun hits that part. So it's not always dark. It's not the dark side of the moon. Uh, the correct term is the far side of the moon. And the reason for that is because it's permanently facing away from us at on Earth. The moon does spin. So you would think normally if it spins, for example, my thumb right now is facing me, but it's not facing you. So if, if the moon spins, then eventually the thumb will be facing you, right? However, what happens is while the moon is spinning, the earth spins along. It, it, it moves around the earth at the same rate. And what end, ends up happening is that we're always looking at the same side because uh, it's spinning at the same time. It's like perfectly timed. Um, astronomers call it being tidally locked. I'll put that up on the screen so you guys know. However, in 1959, uh, a Soviet spacecraft called Luna 3, Luna means moon, so perfect, took pictures of the far side of the moon and the images sent by the probe helped astronomers make the first atlas of that side since it cannot be naturally seen from Earth. Our notable figure born on this day is Tony Braxton in 1967. Ooh, break my heart. Say I'm not gonna torture you with my singing. She was born as Tony Michelle. Michelle with one L. I'm I'm actually gonna put it up on the screen right now because normally Michelle is spelled with two L's, but hers is a little bit different. Tony Michelle Braxton, and she was born in Severn, Maryland. Uh, Tony Braxton is still with us today. Um, so you could say happy birthday to her if you could find a way to send her a message. Um, besides the song I sang, can you name other Tony Braxton songs? Put it on the comments below. And now for our dish of the day. The place of the week is Nepal, so our dish of the day will be Nepali food or Nepalese food. Also, before we begin the video, I just want to tell you that I, might, I may not make ability to go and ability to cook videos regularly in the future. I might make one, one once in a while if there's time. Uh, but in the future, the dish of the day will not have a video anymore as I have more jobs and tasks that I have to do and I do not have the time anymore. I'm sorry. So I want to thank everyone who watches them, especially the full versions, since it was really hard work and sometimes expensive to make. Uh, it is very worth it to do when I know it is being watched. So, but like I said, um, I do not have the time anymore, so expect it to be gone in the coming weeks. But of course, I'm still gonna take a, a take. I'm still gonna talk about some uh, dishes that, um, what do you call this? That is featured for the country of the week. Um, but this time I just cannot be cooking them or going to a restaurant for them. I'm just gonna show you a picture of them and talk about it, just like observance and history and every other part of um, our daily show. So, uh, anyways, uh, without further ado, let's take a look at my video for this week. Enjoy. Okay. 
Okay, so uh, let's turn down the AC a second. So um, I just got off of Discovery. I haven't eaten my lunch yet. And uh, you can see it right here. I hope you can see it. Discovery right there. Alright, so anyways, um, the reason why I haven't eaten lunch yet is because I am going to a Nepalese uh, restaurant to try uh, some Nepalese food since the country of the week is Nepal. So uh, let's go. Okay, so I'm here and um, says that the parking is only free for the first hour. So I'm gonna be quick. I don't think I eat for an hour. So hopefully I'll be fine. Not a good thing when you don't update your uh, Yelp or Google sites to reflect your hours of operation, especially during this um, situation we have with the lockdown and all that with the business closed. If I mean, I'm here trying to support restaurants because food is something that I am. Uh, I'm a foodie, I'm a cook, and I wanna support the restaurants, but not when you're doing this. You're wasting my gas. So, um, after I write a negative review for this place on Yelp and Google, I will um, go home and eat some sardines, and then I guess I'm gonna have to go to, um, what do you call this? I'm gonna have to find a different um, Nepalese restaurant. Or, or I guess if worse comes to worse I'm gonna cook again I mean that's not so bad why would I say that worse well it's worse because I want to try to taste the authentic version because I it's a it's a place I haven't been you know I'd rather taste it first than cook it but hey if the only option is to make one I'll make it so we'll see right now I don't know what to do but you watching this video, of course, you will know what's coming up right after this. Okay, this is the next day now, and it's um, about 6 p.m. Uh, I came back here at the Discovery area, right there. Um, since I want the video to start here, also I had to withdraw some cash. There's a bank over there, uh, ATM, I mean. Anyways, uh, 
I'm gonna go to Placentia this time for the uh, what do you call this for the Nepalese restaurant since the one that is a little bit closer disappointed me as you as you probably saw on the video so yeah let's uh, go to the other restaurant I called this time first making sure they're open cuz I don't want to waste gas again just like the first trip um, which is sad because I kind of planned this uh, there's food at home right now but I'm running out of time I gotta get this video done so I am gonna get food uh, even though there's already food at home this was supposed to be yesterday when there's no food at home but things happen there's got to be some plan B and this is plan B so let's go to Placentia for the Nepalese restaurant Well, as you can see, it is pretty dark right now, so I don't think, even though they have outside seating, I'll be eating here. I'll probably be um, taking it to go. Most likely be taking it to go. Because um, I probably can't even record properly with this, how dark it is. It, it would be nice if I don't record, then I could just enjoy it in this nice um, evening um, dark ish where am i going with this anyways let's just go to everest and i'll get some takeout and then i'll go back home and then we'll film it there So I already ordered um, and I'm taking it to go and um, while we're waiting let's take a look at the menu. Alright hopefully there's enough light. So first thing they recommended was this one. The Himalayan Momo Chicken and uh that's for the appetizer and they also recommended the curries here and i went with um the goat curry which is the lamb curry but with the bone in and you guys know when i also when i keep when i talk about um soup when the bone is in there it still has all the flavor so um i went with the goat curry and I ordered rice to go with that as well as garlic naan bread so we'll see that when we get home and I'll take a better picture of the menu so you guys could see it there. Whoa. we're gonna get demonetized playing music 
and some of you guys don't like country. Anyways, so I got um, right here. Smells good. Um, the food that I ordered, and we're heading home because, as you see, we barely could see anything here. It's so dark. Um, but at least at my house, there's gonna be light. So let's go back home and we'll taste the food. So I'm gonna eat here in the backyard. Um, usually it's nice here and breezy and cool, but it's so hot today. But I have no choice. It's noisy in the kitchen or the dining room table because someone's watching TV. So we're gonna try the food here. Let's take a look. Well, this is pretty good. The taste is very similar to Indian curry. Let's try this tomato chunk right here. Okay, that's a pass. That's definitely a good quality tomato. They didn't skimp on it. Let's try the meat, which is still on the bone, which makes it better. Well, that's great, but you know what? There's something I need to calm down the spiciness. Iced tea. Unsweetened, of course. But anyways, this is great. I wish I could also try the Himalayan momos that they recommended, but that's too much food. I learned from last time. So, I'm gonna finish the rest of this food and then, well, the next part of the video while I'm eating would be me talking about it. So, that's for the Daily Show, right? So, see you there. So, as you saw in the video, our dish of the day is goat curry. Sorry the picture is uh, 
a bit blurry. I didn't want to take a picture of the food in a plastic container or a paper plate. It doesn't look as good. So I just found a picture of goat curry in the internet. So that is the, the goat curry. Um, here's another good picture. This one's much nicer to look at. Um, but yeah, the taste is very similar to Indian curry, but it is very Nepali because of the meat in it. So let me explain in a second. Nepal and India are right next to each other. Actually, Nepal is right above India as a small strip of land above India. So both follow largely the religion of Hinduism. And Hinduism teaches respect for life. So many people in India are vegetarian because their opinion, respecting a life means you're not gonna kill it even for food. So you can't kill a chicken uh, because chicken has life, even if it's gonna be for, for food. Um, so they're vegetarians. Um, however, um, there aren't a lot of vegetarians in Nepal. But that doesn't mean that they don't respect animals. They also practice Hinduism, so they, they still respect life. They just respect it in a different way. My guess is the same way how I respect animals. You guys know I love animals, but I'm not vegetarian. So what I do is that I try not to waste food. And I try not to waste any part of the animal. I eat everything. Um, so number one, you don't waste food. And number two, I would eat things like, um, have you guys had a lengua taco? That's the tongue. You could eat that. They're, they're called offal. Um, intestine is also, you know, eaten. And in fact, it is used to wrap sausages. Uh, so, so any part of the animal is not wasted because from the way I see it, their life was offered to give us sustenance. So the way to respect it is by not wasting it. So uh, my guess is that Nepali are similar in that that is how they respect life. So this dish is very Nepali because it has goat meat in it. Um, while Indian curry would use, usually be just vegetarian. So sometimes spinach or something called vegetable korma. Um, those are the kind of dishes more, um, more widespread in India. So goat curry's ingredient from what I can uh, taste and see uh, are of course the goat, the goat meat. Uh, the tomato, as you saw in the, the video, I tried a big chunk of tomato. There are strips of ginger in it, so I could see that too. Um, as far as pieces that I could see, um, those are the ones. Um, as far as stuff that I could taste, there's turmeric, of course, because it's curry, uh, which is part of garam masala, which is a spice blend common in a lot of curries. Um, there also are some herbs in it and I am not quite sure which one it is because the spices are kind of overpowering it. Uh, but it's delicious, you know, I like it. Let's move on to animal of the day. Our animal of the day today is the Syrian Bluette, also known as Coenagrion Syriacum. You don't have to worry about that. That's the scientific name. Its name comes from, I suppose, its color, uh, bluette. Uh, blue. It, it looks blue to you, don't it? doesn't it? So, it is a species of damselfly found in Lebanon, Syria, and Turkey. Its natural habitats where it lives are swamps, freshwater marshes, ponds, canals, and ditches. So, anything with water. Well, not the big ocean water, but anything with kind of stagnant water, it will probably use as a habitat. It is near threatened, not completely endangered, uh, but because of habitat loss, uh, swamps and all that stuff I mentioned earlier disappearing, uh, they are suffering population loss as there are fewer and fewer places for them to live. You know, I should have had this animal last week when we were talking about Syria. But I guess better late than never, you know? 
Next is our plant of the day. After last week's plant, I think I found a type... Uh, you know, you know, not, not that I'm thinking about it. I think I found a type of uh, topic for plant of the day. Just like how you know my animal of the day is always conservation. Always animals that are endangered or something like that. My word of the day is always things that are commonly misspelled. Uh, so I want my plan of the day to always have one topic uh, from now on, and that topic is culinary plants. So plants that we could use in cooking, and today's plan of the day is galangal. So this is the galangal plant, or galangal. I don't know exactly how to pronounce it, I just call it galangal. We don't actually eat the plant itself though. Uh, but it's good to know what the plant looks like so above the ground. That's how it looks like right there. Um, personally, I think it's um, important that we understand where our food comes from. So that's why we have a picture of the actual plant. But let's move on and take a look at the part that we actually eat. Which is this. This is a picture of a rhizome. Uh, this is the rhizome of the galangal plant. The rhizome is the part between where the shoot, the rest of the plants grow out of. And it's between that and the roots. So as you can see, uh, these, this, the picture has little black spots. That's where the roots will grow from. And of course, the thing that it's pointed up is the shoots. Um, this is the part that you eat. Uh, I guess, you know, you might be saying, wait, that, that looks like ginger. Well, yes and no. Let's look at them closely in comparison. So here is a picture of both of them next to, next, next to each other. To the left is Galangal. Right here is Galangal. And to the right, so up here, to the right of it, is the common ginger. They are both in the same family of plants. So yeah, it is kind of ginger. It is in the same family. However, galangal has smoother skin. Uh, look at it very closely. See, see how rough the skin is on the ginger and then the galangal has smoother skin. Another distinct feature are the lines uh, that are more pronounced on the galangal. So the ginger lines, the little stripes are kind of blurry, while on the galangal, you could really see lines, very distinct. So why are we even bothering to differentiate both of them? Well, the biggest thing is the taste is very different. You cannot swap them. So if you're out of ginger, you can't just put galangal. Or if you have galangal, you can't just put ginger. Um, they taste very, very differently. Galangal has the aroma, uh, so you want, you, the aroma is the smell. However, when you smell it, it kind of helps you taste. Um, it has the aroma of pine trees, so it feels very cooling, relaxing. You smelled pine before, it, it's kind of breezy and, you know, very cool. Uh, ginger, on the other hand, um, is warming so the total opposite it has a spicy warm feeling when you taste it galangal is also a common ingredient for southeast asian cooking common in thai and indonesian cuisines but not so much with dishes here in the west so that's why you probably don't know or never heard of it before but now you do next is Art of the day. Today's art of the day will be architecture. Architecture? Architecture. Architecture. There will be no cuts. This will be part of the show. Architecture. Architecture. I will not say that again because it's so hard. Buildings and houses can also be art if it's unique enough, by the way. So that is why we have that for today's Art of the Day. So, we'll start with the most famous architecture art. I said it again and I 
probably said it wrong. Anyways, this is Falling Water by Frank Lloyd Wright. Designed in 1935, the house was made as a private residence and weekend home for the family of a Pittsburgh department store owner, Edgar J. Kaufman. Uh, Edgar J. Kaufman Sr. Uh, it is located uh, in the mountains of southwestern Pennsylvania, 70 miles east of Pittsburgh. So uh, a little bit far away from where he lived, but that's going to be his weekend or vacation home, I guess. That's how rich people roll. Uh, nowadays, it's open as a public museum and it's surrounded by 5,100 acres of natural land known as Bear Run Nature Reserve. Uh, you guys have heard uh, this a lot on our show when we talk about places. This masterpiece, or I should do this, this masterpiece is also a designated UNESCO World Heritage Site. So you guys should know what that means by now. Uh, what do you guys think of this house? I if it was yours, would you enjoy living here? I'd say you must like the sound of water if you do, right? Because then if you live, let's say, on that house, you would constantly hear that waterfall uh, going down. So I would like it. I would like that house. But it's a museum now. It's not, it's not a house anymore. And now for our word of the day. Our word of the day is tomato. T-O-M-A-T-O. -O. It is a noun, a glossy red or occasionally yellow pulpy edible fruit uh, that is eaten as a vegetable or in salad. Simple, right? How could you misspell this thing? Today's word is something that you guys should know how to spell. But remember, my theme is always commonly misspelled. So the commonly misspelled part of this word is its plural form. So meaning if there's more than one tomato, it becomes tomatoes. But how should you spell it? You should spell it like this. Tomatoes. T-O-M-A-T-O. E S. It is mistake mistake. It is mistakenly spelled without the E. So now you know the plural of tomato is tomatoes with a letter E. Okay? That is how you spell tomatoes. Moving on to today's fact of the day, what do we have today? Today's fact of the day, bones found at Seymour Island indicate that 37 to 40 million years ago, penguins stood at a formidable 6 feet tall and weighed 250 pounds. Whoa, giganto penguins. Imagine that. Penguins as tall as a typical NBA basketball player. Seymour Island, by the way, is one of the islands at the tip of the Graham, Isle, uh, the Graham Land in, on the Antarctic Peninsula. Graham Land is the, the very top close to South America. You know how South America is like pointed down? And then that little pointed uh, part that, that is close to South America is Graham Land. But yeah, if you notice, a lot of prehistoric animals are large and huge. So you would ask, why is that the case? That is because being smaller is actually a positive thing uh, in evolution. The, that's what happened when um, species adapt. So back then, when food was very easy to find and plentiful, it was fine. Um, you were going to have plenty of food to eat, so you could support being big. But as time went on, food became harder and harder to find. So living beings has to find ways to survive. Um, for example, we talked about uh, the, the, tree, the tree shrew, who's the only mammal aside from us who can eat spicy food. They, they developed that ability to eat spicy food so that they could find food that no one else wants. Another way is for us to favor the smaller. Because the smaller you are, the less food you're going to need the less food you have to hunt when there's not very many around. 
so that is why things are much smaller nowadays especially since being bigger doesn't have that big of an advantage anymore you don't have to you don't have to fight against big animals most animals are small uh, humans have developed tools to fight against bigger animals yeah, and stuff like that but that that's the gist of it anyways that is our show for today October 7, 2020. I hope you guys enjoy it. Next week, we are going to have a lot more shows of this format coming to you. Um, I'm blocking the credits. <laughs> Let, hold on. Let me. There you go. Let's do it that way for now. I'm blocking the credits. So. I lost my train of thought. Anyways, as I was saying, uh, more videos in the future are going to have this format. And actually, I'm going to be on that side along with Joe next week um, for the daily videos. Uh, so that we'll have like kind of a talk show format. Uh, so I hope you look forward to that. And I'll see you guys next time.